Now, when you ride out with him, <clears throat> make sure you stay up, bro, because I'm telling you, foe be falling asleep when he be driving, bro. Last time he had fell asleep, he going to tell me when I get up from the back of the curtain that, oh, I was just trying to get some snacks. You were running off the road, fam. Oh, now. They already know what time it is. Say, check me out, man. Before I start my video, bro, y'all already know what to do, man. Hit that like and hit that subscribe button. And when you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that bell notification on. So anytime I drop a video, you be notified. Hey, Sat Rocket, you got up on. We can kick it a week of vibe. So why that I'm cooling, bit? I had Jack got my little CDL or whatever, you feel me? I'm nervous. I really don't even want to drive. I ain't going to hold you. I'm, I'm really nervous, you feel me? Because, like, I done seen 18 wheelers on the road, and I always told myself, well, I ain't getting behind that big motherfucker. I ain't getting behind that big motherfucker. It's too much weight. That bit too long. It's too much responsibility. I ain't trying to do it, right? So then I ended up getting my CDL because I started seeing the bread that come with it. I'm like, oh, hold on. This might be my cup of tea. I don't even drink tea. This right here might be my cup of tea, you feel me? You feel me? So I'm like, I'm finna, I'm finna just hop in that water. Let me just dip my big toe in. Let me just dip my big toe in, right? So I dip my big toe and I was like, okay. It, it look warm. I like it a little colder, but it, it is what it is, you feel me? So boom, bitch. I hop in right now, bro. Brother-in-law, he told me, he said, man, look, key, bro. As soon as you get your CDL, you feel me? I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put you in the dough. I said, bet that, bet that. So, boom, I had went through school right now. While I'm in school, they got us driving these little short trailers. Now, mind you, I'm going to break it down for the people who don't drive trucks. A big trailer bagging up is easier to bag up than a short trailer. Well, what you mean, Keith? Because a short trailer, that's a smaller area to bag up and a big trailer. Big, nah, trust me, bro, because when you bagging up a big trailer, you could, you could, you could do all it. It ain't going to move as much unless you like super unexperienced. You just get the jackknife and shit. Then at that point, they're going to take your CDL and tell you, you go sit down somewhere, you feel me? But on short trailer, big, as soon as you try to, uh, that big going to, and now you're looking dumb. Please don't let it be a whole bunch of truck drivers looking at you that's experienced. Because I promise you, bro, experienced truck drivers know a rookie as soon as they see one. Like the motherfuckers who be at the, at, like like if you was at a, a Love's or uh, when you got to back up to a dock and you constantly having to pull up reverse, pull up reverse. Oh, they laughing at you, folk. I done done it myself. So, boom, bitch. I'm in the school. I'm thugging. You feel me? I had one on here. Boo, boo, boo. Got my license. Now I'm happy. I'm big cheesing in hell. I'm, I'm happy. You feel me? You can't tell me nothing. I'm about to start making CDL money. Boy, I get the job, right? First dude I go out with was a dude named Lamar. So when I get with Lamar, well, let me not say that. I went out with the supervisor dude named Mike. Mike was a bald head dude who gave me, um, um, you know how like them dudes who ain't never had no authority or no power and then they finally get it and then they abuse it. That was Mike. And then I went out with a dude named Derek the same night, right? So Derek was an older dude and Derek vibes gave me like that old ass grandpa that'll be around you and be like, hey, that ain't no boy. She looking good, boy. She looking good, boy. Where her mom at, boy? Where her TT them at, boy? Hook me up. That was, that was there. That was there. Right? So, boom, I'm going to get with them. They slanging the cases. And then my mom, like, I, I like I ain't that fast, folk. But Mike was like, man, you're going to have to learn how to, you know, slang these cases. Do this, do that. All right, bro, calm down. You feel me? Like, calm down. You feel me? So, boom, I ride out with him. Then I think the next day, I ride out with Mike again and a dude named Nick. Now, Nick, he didn't drive. Nick was just a helper, you feel me? But Nick was good at what he did, you feel me? So, riding out with them or whatever, I had got a little piece of the game. Now, mind you, whenever you start a new job or whenever you doing something for the first time, you only going to get a little piece of the game. You're not going to get the whole slice of the game. You got to actually go through something to learn something before you be like, you know what? that crazy because when i first thought i ain't know nothing like that but now you feel me so i'm learning the game what up but i ain't really liking mike though i ain't liking mike because he he mike the type of dude that if you let him talk to you crazy he gonna constantly talk to you crazy you feel me so boom as everything going through and going through he end up 
put me with different guys or whatever. So that's when I get with Lamar. So Lamar was this older black guy, you know what I'm saying? Real cool, real laid back. Lamar was like, hey, uh, you drove before? I was like, I mean, yeah, school or whatever. He was like, look, I'm going to run the whole route. All you got to do is just drive that bit back home, you feel? I was like, all right, bet. We run the whole route. Now, that same night was the first night as we driving. This woman started, this dude, the dude was honking his horn, bit. Me and Lamar look over. His old lady, her homegirl in the back seat, she done flashed us. The girl in the back seat didn't lift up her skirt. She twerking in the back seat. Oh, boy, just like, yeah, yeah. In my mind, though, I'm thinking, I never let my old lady do that. Ever. You feel me? So I'm like, nah, they were trucking like he like, yeah, yeah, they were trucking like. So boom, we book at the Oklahoma, you feel me? Run that whole around. I'm trash, you feel me? I'm talking about, boy, when I first got in the food industry, trash. You feel me? So I'm like, man, oh, like, it is what it is. I just got to get seasoned. My fries ain't had no seasoning on them. My fry, my fry would like, like unseasoned ass fries, you feel? You know how it is when you bite to that unseasoned fry, you, hell nah, bitch. Give me some salt. Man, give me some salt real quick, bro. They ain't put no salt on these fries, bro. What a little McDonald's salt shaker, bitch. Put, nah, nah. Season my fries up, bitch. For real. So my fry was hella unseasoned. When it was time to drive back, I'm nervous. I'm I'm scared, bitch. But in my mind, I'm like, I got to do it, right? So I do it. Boom. I get back. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm the shit now. Just cause I did this, right? So boom, I, I get done with Lamar. Uh I think the weekend came. Uh so then I come back. I'm with little knick-knack dudes or whatever, you feel me? And then I get, well then like it tell you who you gonna go with for the next day. So the dude I had to go with the next day was a guy named Joe. Now Joe was an older black dude, not older, older, but he was older than I was, you feel me? When I started driving trucks, I was like 24, like 24 years old. So, my brother-in-law, he telling me, like, oh, yeah, you going with Joe. He going to get you right. I'm like, oh, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. He was like, but look, though, um, make sure you watch Joe. I'm like, what's up? He like, man. So, me and Joe used to go to Shreveport, right? I'm like, yeah. And he like, man, we used to go to Shreveport and shit, bro. I let Joe drive out. You know what I'm saying? And I stopped letting Joe drive out. I'm like, why? What's up? He said, man, bro. I'm in the back sleep, right? We had jail pulled out, bro. Like, it was like probably 45 minutes to an hour down the road. We jail pulled out. Not too long, bro. Next thing I know, bro, I hear. And at first, I ignored it. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I paused. I, and I laid back down, key. Then I heard. So I, got, so I got up and I opened up the curtain. I'm like, bro, you good? He, yeah, nah, nah, nah. I, I, I was just trying to, I was just trying to get some snacks. I got some snacks right here. I was just trying to get my snacks. All right, bro. So I laid back down. I closed my eye. That's how I got up and I got in the front, buckled up my seatbelt, and then I started talking to him and everything. And then I ain't hear no more. He was like, "So just pay attention to what he's doing, bro, because I'm telling you, bro, he be he be falling asleep, acting like he ain't falling asleep." So I'm like, "All right, like all right, I got you, I got you." I get in the truck with Joe, and it was a local route, right? So it ain't like we had to go hella far, you know what I'm saying? Little Dallas area, you know what I'm saying? Probably, you know, you know, just the Dallas area with him. So as we doing it, Joe talking to me, you know what I'm saying? He give me the game. And then you know how, like, when you work with somebody, bro, you start giving them a spiel about your whole life story and shit and what you done been through in life. So Joe breaking everything down to me about what he done been through, what's going on with him and his wife, what's going on with him and his wife and his kids, like the lawyer situation, like a whole bunch of his baby mama that put him on child support. I'm like, damn, that crazy, bro. Like all this stuff happening to you, you know? He, yeah, man. But, you know, I bounce back every time, man. I bounce back every time, kid, man. But just be careful. You got to be careful with these women that you be picking, bro. Cause I was young, you know, and, and now, you know, everything that happened, you know what I'm saying? But my wife, she like a lawyer. So, you know, she be helping me with my cases and everything. Oh, okay. That, that was up. That was up. That was up. Y'all, 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 y'all. So, we get done with the route. You know what I'm saying? Everything was cool. My brother asked me. He fell asleep. 
I said, nah, he, nah, he ain't fall asleep. We just did like a little local rap, you know what I'm saying? He ain't fall asleep or nothing. Oh, all right, all right, but you still got to watch him, though, man. He'll nod out quick on you. He'll nod out quick on you. I'm like, oh, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Now, with me first dropping trust, I didn't think it was a certain thing of while you behind the wheel, you could just fall asleep. Because I'm new to the game. I'm a new boo. I don't know nothing about this. This don't know nothing about me, you feel me? So, they started giving me an out-of-town route. Now, once they start doing that, obviously I was still trash, right? Do the out of town where I'll come back. I worked with a guy named Alvin. Alvin was a bald head old dude that this had to be the funniest shit. Alvin had bought some rims on consignment. You don't know consignment it means that just that just me being funny, right? <laughs> he, he rented some rims out. Didn't pay it, got the rims towed. So that means these motherfuckers came, lifted his truck up, took the wheels off his truck, tear them bitches back. That man then woke up. I right, realized his rim was gone. <laughs> Went to the place, got them bitches back, paid his little note, and got the rims back on his truck. That Alvin, right? So Alvin knew I was scared to drive. Like, I ain't gonna admit it, I was. I mean, I'm going to admit it. I was scared to drive, you feel me? I ain't going to hold you. So, Alvin drove the whole route. Now, our first stop we get to, bitch. Our first stop we get to, mind you, I, we had to go down a ramp. So, I'm finna go down a ramp. Bus flour, bus sugar, fucking rice, everything. He, Alvin didn't even try to help. He's just mad about the whole situation, right? Now, I, I know he on the phone with the other workers. Cut, cut. How he acting and everything, I know he telling them like, man, this nigga trash, bro. He, he, he there, bro. And the third. So, but he ain't saying it to me, though. So, I'm like, all right, whatever, you feel me? That's just how I'm feeling. Like, man, all right, whatever. So, boom, bitch, me and Alvin. Now, if y'all hear the truck doing that, that just, that be regenerating right now. That bitch is regenerating. So, boom, bitch, me and Alvin get done what we're going to get done. You know what I'm saying? They sent us all the way somewhere to over here. You feel me? He was mad about the whole situation, but he did it. Because they said, you bring that truck back, you're going to get fired. So, I went on ahead and did it. And then, boom, we brought the truck back, right? Now, I still have not seen nobody fall asleep behind the wheel. All right? Me and Mike got into it because... Mike was saying that I'm trash. He telling everybody he trash. He can't do that. He can't do that. Whoa, whoa. And then you know how it go. We'll, we'll go around, come around type shit. Or let me not say that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, in workplaces, you would think that women miss it, right? And women women can be missing. No, not to my women, but I'm just saying a lot of women, y'all could be missing, right? But men could be messy too. Because once you in the clique and your little homeboys at work start saying certain things and everybody said one thing about something, one of them dudes going to go back and tell another dude that they cool with over here, tell him not to say nothing. He going to go tell a dude he cool with and next thing you know, they're going to come back to you. When they come back to me, I'm like, damn, that crazy, bro. You, you, you were saying all this and that and third about who, me? So I'm hot. Now, mind you, Mike the supervisor, though, you feel me? I'm hot. I'm like, bro, like, hold on. Like, he got he got to see me. Like, what you mean you saying all this and that? But you ain't saying it to my face, you feel me? Like, I, I'm in Oklahoma out of town. And I'm drove, you feel me? The dude I'm with, he like, bro, just chill, kid, bro. Like, he wants you to do that, bro. He gonna fuck around and fire you, bro. You pop off, bro. Don't be hot headed about the situation, bro. If you want to do something, you know what I'm saying? Just be better, you know what I'm saying? Just be better. Ooh, ooh. I hear what you're saying, Kenfo, but at the same time, I really don't. Because what if it was you? What 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 if it was you? You feel me? You don't want to straighten that bit out, right? Okay, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to straighten it. I'm trying to see what's happening with him. You feel me? Like, come on, bro. So, I get back to the yard. I get back to the yard. Mike and the yard. I'm like, hey, bro. Like, you good? Like, what's up? Like, now nah, I'm just saying, you you gotta do better. You know what I'm saying? Everybody saying this and everybody saying, nah. But it was you that was saying it though. It was you that was saying it, fam. Not everybody. It was you. You feel me? So, what he do? He put me with my brother-in-law. Now, me and my brother-in-law work. My brother-in-law teach me a lot of things without teaching me. And I learned a lot of things without really saying nothing. Like, asking him too many questions. I just watched him and I, and, and I learned, right? A whole bunch of new faces came to the job, right? You had uh, Devon came, Trey came, which was Mike's cousin or nephew or something like that. I don't know. 
then Mike actual nephew Cam came. Um, it was a couple Mexicans that had came. It was a whole bunch of people that came to the job. You feel me? So boom, bet when they be thugging. Now, after once the new guys came, I wasn't the new boot no more. You feel me? I had learned some shit. I had been through some shit, and I know how everything go, right? Some of the most craziest things that could ever happen to you is people watching you fail and laugh about it. The biggest thing they used to do is Snapchat. These motherfuckers would Snapchat you falling, all the product falling out, Snapchat and send it to the whole group or the, a lot of people that work there and, and the people that work there watching you fail and everybody talk shit about you, right? So, Mike Nephew come up. And he finna go down the ramp. Now they didn't stack that man dolly with beans, rice, flour, sugar, heavy shit. And in my mind, I'm I'm stacking my dolly. And I look back, and I'm like, that crazy that they gonna do that man like that. You feel me? That 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 wild for that they gonna do that man like that, right? So boom, he let him stack the dolly. That man go down that ramp, folk. Immediately fell. As he fall, it was four of us in the truck, which was crazy. Four of us in the truck, right? Um, I forgot old boy now who used to always use that lotion. He used to always use lotion and shit. He thought he was like a little pretty boy with him, Nick, me, Cam. Now, Cam didn't drive. Cam was like a helper like Nick on some shit, right? As soon as they he finna go down, they immediately got to snatch it up. And now they, they like, look at, you, look at your nephew, Mike. Look at your nephew, Mike. Look at your nephew. Nephew fell. Boom. Everything fell. He looked up at him. We all looking down at him. I'm like, Pfft. I go back to stacking my dollar, you feel me? I'm ready for him to get on up out the way so I ain't going down the ramp. They laughing at him, sent it to everybody in the group. Everybody, Joe, everybody, right? So everybody clowning them, everybody clowning Mike, like, look at your nephew, look at your nephew, look at your nephew, right? That shit, that was wild to me, folks. So boom, bitch. Now I'm seasoned. Now my fries finally got a little bit of season on it. Well, you can. Ooh, that. And then you get like two or three and you dip them in your sauce and you eat it. That how my fried wood now, you feel me? Them bitches were crispy. So boom, bitch. I ain't doing too much talking though, right? I ain't doing too much talking because mind you, like when everything popped off, I felt like motherfuckers were talking about me. So in my mind, I was like, I ain't really, I ain't really friendly. You feel me? Like, I don't want to do no talking. You could have been the one talking about me. You feel me? So that it is what it is. Like, don't even, I was on some BG titles. Don't talk to me. You feel me? Not even when you see me in the streets, don't talk to me. You feel me? So me and B, this guy named B, right? Me and B started doing a lot of Oklahoma. Right, I would go with B every week to go do Oklahoma, and I was there to do Shreveport. Right, so me and B in Oklahoma, and uh, we get a call, and when they like, man, bro, what's up? Man, nigga, Jordan Red, what, what happened? Man, bro, I'ma tell you about, it. I'ma tell you about it. So Joe and a dude named Devon started doing. A route, I forgot what the route was, but it was a pretty long route, right? I did that route with Devon once. I want to say it was another Oklahoma route, but I don't want to just be sitting up here saying anything about it because if I don't know about it, but I think it was the Oklahoma route. Well, as story goes, is Devon got in the back and told Joe, You good? and Joe said, Yeah, now the whole time they were doing these routes. Devon always slept first and Joe would drive the route and then Devon would drive the other half of the route and then drive back. That's how we used to always do it, right? So Devon go to sleep in the back. He and that be cool. And now mind you, in the back, they got like a net. You can like buckle up if you don't feel comfortable with your partner driving. You can buckle up in the net. And if anything happened, that net gonna save you. But that net can also cost you your life too because if something happened and you can't hear get up out that truck because you because you stuck in that net because once you once you buckle that bit in you in you feel me so boom bit that like all right story go that Devon go in the back he go to sleep Joe drive now as Joe driving I want to say Joe on thirty five now he might been on forty five he was on one of them he going down the highway to go up to Oklahoma. Man, about an hour into it, about 45 minutes to an hour into it. Next thing you know, skip! 
boom, he didn't hit. Like, you know how, like, you know how, like, when you about to exit off the highway, and then you see, like, you see, like, um, that, 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 that little ass metal, uh, long ass, it ain't even a pole, bitch, like, long ass strip of metal that's letting you know, like, okay, bitch, there go your exit, keep on the highway. Well, he hit that, boom, he hit it. He messed up the whole front end of the truck where it was totaled out. He hit it so hard, Devon flew out the back, hit his back on the part where you push your, your brakes in, you know, like the little dashboard or whatever. He hit his back, boom, messed his back up, fell. Jordan fucked around and boop. Now he over here slumped, you feel me? Motherfucker behind him. Everybody trying to get out of the way. Everybody trying to make sure everything good, you feel me? They done went. Sir, you good? Sir, you good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. The boy, you good? My bad, my bad, bro. My bad, bro. So, boom. I'm like, I'm like, no. They like, man, bro. Oh, yeah, bro. Like, yeah, he done, he done raped it. He done raped it. So, they fired Joe. Joe gone. Now I go out ride out with Devon probably like a couple days later, like a week later when he recovered, right? I'm like, bro, what happened, Devon? He's like, man, bro, like, it crazy because we always run that route, you know what I'm saying? He ain't never just fell asleep, you feel me? And then, like, now all of a sudden, bro, he, he didn't fell asleep, bro, like, man, all I know is, bro, I went to the back. It wasn't even that long we had left the yard key, like 45 minutes to an hour, bro. And I'm sleeping in the bag, you feel me? And then that thing I know I hear doom. When I hear doom, I done fuck around and boom, boom, flew to the front, hit my back on the little dab or whatever, you feel me? Like he could have killed me in that key, man. He could have killed me, man. Like if he was tired, bro, he should have just let me know, bro. Then I would have drove out, you know what I'm saying? Let him get some rest. But shit, he ain't say nothing. So I thought everything was cold, bro. But yeah, man, he had hit that motherfucker. So he told it the whole car key. He totaled that motherfucker, man. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, man, we was just in that bit like, damn, you feel me? Then next thing you know, bro, the people that came up there, Mike, them that came up there, you know what I'm saying? And they had to tow the truck, you know what I'm saying? And then shit, bro, I, we was all, we couldn't even work that day, bro. I was off for like two days because my bag. Then I had went to the little chiropractor and everything, you know what I'm saying? Trying to give me a little extra, you know what I'm saying? Put in a little workman comp type shit, you feel me? But yeah, man, that shit was crazy, bro. Like, I'm talking about when it happened, bro, everything happened so fast. I had Jeff fell in a deep sleep, you feel me? And then boom, and I hit, bro. And like, man, like, that shit, it was like, it was like my life flat for my eye, Key. You know what I'm saying? I could have went out the windshield, bro. I'm like, damn, that crazy, bro. Like, and at that time, I thought like nothing like that could ever happen to me. But it did. Later on in life, fucked around. I was smoking that gas. Fucked around and ate too much food. Fell asleep behind the wheel. Woke up. Looked down. Oh, I got some hot wings. Ate the hot wings. Thinking that shit was going to wake me up. Smoke some more gas. Fell asleep again. Skirt, skirt. Boom. Hit a little ass pole. And, and that was the end of the story for me. You feel me? So, that right there, man, was... Look at the dumb man. That right there, man, had to be some of the funniest shit ever because it wasn't funny that it happened. It was funny how, like, how, like, Joe was. Joe always would fall asleep behind the wheel, even on some local rides. I heard some guys say Joe would do a local ride and fall asleep behind the wheel and then act like he was trying to get somebody his bag to eat. You weren't trying to get nothing out your bag to eat, bitch. You feel me? Until I, I actually started driving a lot more and I realized that you know, like, you could be up, up, bro. And when you get behind that wheel, man, like, man, you... It's just something about driving the 18 wheeler early in the morning, late at night, you know what I'm saying? That'll really get you tired and get you get you sleepy, you know what I'm saying? And, man, that has to be some of the scariest shit in life. Because you can't fight your sleep. You know what I'm saying? That's something that even you can roll the window down, splash water in your face, hit yourself. You can do all that. But when you tired, you tired, man. You know, and driving an 18 wheeler tire, bro, is dangerous. Because not only can you kill yourself or your partner, you can kill people around you. You know what I'm saying? So I advise y'all, man, if y'all going out to get y'all CDLs, man, just be careful. You know what I'm saying? Just get you plenty of rest. You know what I'm saying? And just get ready for whatever you about to get yourself into. You know, because, man, it's a beast out here. You feel me? Other cars don't know that you're tired, fam. So if something pop off, bro, trust me, they're going to blame it on you as the 18-wheeler driver. I don't care if 